I completely agree that Rotten Tomatoes clearly has it in for the DCEU. It's a war between parent companies. Rotten Tomatoes' parent company, Warner Brothers, clearly has it out for the DCEU's parent company, Warner Brothers, because that's how logic works now. <laughs> You serious? The DC Extended Universe appears to be in a rut. Both Batman v Superman and Suicide Squad bombed critically in about equal degrees. What is interesting about this is the fact that while both movies end up being close to equal quality-wise, how they are bad varies a great deal. Batman v Superman kept a fairly consistent tone of crappiness throughout. You're letting him kill Martha! Why did you say that name? Meanwhile, Suicide Squad bounces between being genuinely good, completely generic, and downright bad throughout the movie. Every scene and element hits a different quality level. So was that like a, a pep talk? Yeah, that was pep talk. Most of the main characters are handled extremely well. Margot Robbie's Harley Quinn is spot on. We're bad guys. It's what we do. Viola Davis works well as Amanda Waller. Complete the mission, you get time off your prison sentence. Fail the mission, you die. Deadshot and Diablo have backstories that are fairly generic and have been seen before, but Jay Hernandez brings his A-game and takes Diablo from being a standard character and makes him more memorable. As for Will Smith, even the most generic writing ever can't stop him from being the essence of pure charisma that he is. What you gonna do? You wanna see something? Yo, yeah, I wanna you see, wanna see something? Yes, I wanna see something! I was just trying to get you there. You know how I feel, right? We good. Hell, one of the blandest actors ever in the world, Jai Courtney, feels criminally underused in this movie. I never thought I'd watch a movie where I'd wish for more Jai Courtney, but this is it. So with all this in the movie's favor, how can it go wrong? Well, there is one character that really doesn't work here, and it's a crime when you underuse a character like this. Oh, I'm not gonna kill you. I'm just gonna hurt you. Really, really. Probably the most famous comic book villain of all time. And he's really fairly forgettable here. Looking at promotional material, I would assume he'd be the main villain. Uh -oh. Not good. But no, he's a character completely forced into the movie for no goddamn reason. If they had limited him to Harley Quinn flashback scenes and the breakout scene at the end, I would have been far more forgiving. But there's a whole subplot here where Joker is trying to help Harley escape that is completely pointless and forgotten about almost as soon as it has any noteworthy influence on the movie. It's just this massive time sink with no promise of anything greater to come of it. Performance-wise, Jared Leto comes off as a poor man's Heath Ledger. <laughs> want to kill you? What would I do without you? Oh, I'm not gonna kill you. But it's honestly nearly impossible to tell if he works as the character because he just feels like a generic blank slate crazy bad guy. Maybe he'll work better in a Batman movie where he has more screen time to flesh him out a bit, but here he's practically a non-entity that keeps popping up for no reason. And at the opposite end of this spectrum, we have characters with far too little screen time, the most noteworthy being Slipknot. I'm not super familiar with the comic book version of this character, and I do like how his attempted escape with Captain Boomerang mirrors a similar event in the comic book. Mind games. What's that? Oh, it was bombing the neck crap. That ain't real, mate. See, they're trying to trap us with our own minds, right? But you look around, we're free, bruh. But the character barely exists in the movie. His death is supposed to show how anyone on this squad could die. But with so little time spent with him, the character doesn't remotely feel equal to the others. He might as well just wear a red shirt on this away mission. All right, men, this is a dangerous mission, and it's likely one of us will be killed. The landing party will consist of myself, Mr. Spock, Dr. McCoy, and Ensign Ricky. Ah, oh, crap. But if the Joker and Slipknot were the worst parts of this movie, it might have turned out alright. All of that is nothing when compared to the massively generic story this movie goes for. To break it down, Bad Guy decides to kill everyone by shooting a beam of light into the air and zombifying the local population to do her bidding. And he was a, a vegetarian and a painter, so he must have been going, I can't get the fucking trees, damn I will kill everyone in the world! And that's pretty much it. That's the entirety of the villain's plan. Has the beam of light in the air become so cliché that we can now just do it without any explanation? In the Avengers, it was so an alien army can invade Earth. In Man of Steel, it was a terraformer. 
In Suicide Squad, it's just there because Avengers and Man of Steel used it. It's just terrible. But what's worse is that I can see some clever storytelling making this movie work. Make one of the characters a primary point of view for the audience. Deadshot seems prime for this, since the only other character with enough screen time would be Harley Quinn, and she's too crazy for the audience to relate to. But with Deadshot as a POV, the audience only learns information as he learns it for the most part. So rather than instantly knowing that Amanda Waller is responsible for the shitstorm in this movie, we learn it much later, and it is allowed to become a noteworthy part of the story. The Suicide Squad has been gathered together to stop an event starred by the formation of the Suicide Squad. That is by far the most interesting story point here, but it's handled so matter-of-factly that any twist element to it is wasted instantly because the audience already knew about it, and any blame placed on Waller for this crap is just ignored in favor of setting up a Suicide Squad sequel. And it's not like they couldn't have done both. They just chose not to, largely through incredibly choppy editing. When they announced that Zack Snyder's version of Batman v Superman would be released, I really wasn't excited because the problems with that movie would take far more than extra screen time or re-editing could fix. However, I would like to see a director's cut of this movie. I largely suspect that the extra Joker stuff was forced into this movie because the studio felt that more Joker would sell more tickets. Though this may not be true since according to Jared Leto, most of the Joker stuff was cut out. Then a good re-edit, especially one that doesn't introduce Deadshot and Harley Quinn, then immediately turn around and introduce Deadshot shot on Harley Quinn again would be nice. Frankly, Ayer is a talented guy and Suicide Squad is a superhero movie that's well suited to him, probably more than any other property. I want to see his original cut of this movie because I'm fairly sure there's a good movie here. It just wasn't what was shown in theaters. Sadly, I have given up hope that the DCEU will ever give us a good movie. Sure, Wonder Woman has an awesome trailer, but so did Suicide Squad. What Suicide Squad actually tells me is even if the DCU makes a good movie, the studio execs will just re-edit it into oblivion, leaving the movie a husk of what should have been. Do I want Wonder Woman and Justice League to be good? Of course. But with what we've seen so far, it looks like the DCEU is literally just taking the worst aspects of the MCU, like the lame villains and the pointless deaths, and adding new crappy ideas and making movies that learn nothing from what came before. Sure, I guess you could say they're treading new ground in superhero movies, but the only reason it's new ground is because it's shit, and everyone else was smart enough to avoid it. If you like this video, please make sure to hit that like button and go ahead and subscribe. That helps me out a lot. And if you really love this video, consider visiting my Patreon page. 